Hey Internet, Brandy Bill from Bill Loud and Science here. Halloween has come to a close, another successful holiday full of ghosts and goblins and ghouls and spooks and spirits. And now all we're left with is a stomach ache. Yes, it is the season of eating candy, one of my favorite parts of Halloween. And you might call me a follower, but my number one favorite candy is also the number one selling Halloween candy in America. Skittles. They've been my favorite since I was a child, and what I just learned this year is that you can use these delicious rainbow candies to do some pretty cool science. Now, the first thing we can do, of course, is open them up, and we can test out our knowledge of the rainbow, right? After all, their slogan is, taste the rainbow. So, if we open them and we pour out a few here, we can be forgiving. I mean, we can call indigo and violet. We can combine and call them purple. No problem at all. And so, what we're left with then is, instead of Roy G. Biv, we can call it Roy G. B. All right, here we go. We are going to find our rainbow. R is for red, all right? No problem. And O is for my favorite color, orange. Great. And then we got one. And then, of course, my other favorite color, Roy G. Biv. B is for, B is for, um, hold on one second. Maybe I, maybe I got confused here. B is for, there are no blue Skittles. No blue Skittles. No blue Skittles. <gasps> How do you taste the rainbow if you don't have blue? Well, if we can move past that fact, we can still do a really cool science trick. Like I say, I just learned this trick this year, and it's an absolutely cool way to learn about a couple of other scientific concepts. One of the really cool things about this demonstration is it doesn't take very much in terms of supplies. All you need are, of course, your Skittles, and there should be a few extra. So if a couple of them happen to get eaten in the course of this demonstration, that would probably be okay. You're also going to need a white plate. A paper plate will work, a styrofoam plate, a plastic plate, but a nice white dish will work the best. And then you need some hot water. The hotter the better, but of course you want to be careful you don't want to burn yourself. So we're going to take our Skittles and we're going to arrange them in a circle around the edge of the plate. And we can do it in whatever order we want, but here again it might be a good way to kind of reinforce those rainbow colors. Roy G. B or in this case, Roy G. B so I'll start with a red one. And then an orange one. <laughs> We're going to carefully but fairly quickly pour some hot water around the edge of the plate on the outside of the Skittles. And we're going to witness something really, really cool. Let's check it out. Ready? Slowly and carefully, we're going to pour the hot water around the edge of the plate. And then we wait. But it doesn't take very long, and in real time, right before our eyes, we are going to see a rainbow. Now that is really cool, right? What's happening? Well, the food dye, the thing that gives the candy its color, is made of molecules, just like everything around us. We talk about molecules all the time in science. And so what's happening is we're adding water to those molecules, it's shaking them loose from the candy, and they're able to mix into the water and kind of float. That process is called diffusion. But wait, when I first saw this, I had a question. Why didn't the colors just all mixed together. That's the other cool scientific concept demonstrated here, which is gravity. 
when those molecules get shaken loose, when they start to diffuse into the water, they don't really have a reason to go left, to go right. Instead, they go the easiest direction, where the rest of the water molecules are flowing, which is down, down towards the center. Now, you might be thinking, isn't this a waste of candy? Well, actually, if we look, once the water is cool enough to touch, let's take a purple one here, and we'll see that it's purple on the top where the water didn't touch, but it's clear on the bottom. Skittles are clear on the inside, but fortunately, the flavor is in the middle. The flavor isn't in that colorful candy shell, so as long as the water is cool enough to touch, you can still eat all of your Skittles. Mmm. Mmm. Maybe a couple more. Now, I know what you're wondering. Brainy Bill, you ate the candy, but what about all that water there? And I tell you what, just for you, since I'm a scientist, I gotta know what is unknown. I think we're gonna have to try. If I take a glass here... Happy Halloween. All right then, mm, okay. Now while this is a really cool demonstration, what I really want to talk about today is how we can use just candy we have sitting around after Halloween to do a true scientific experiment. The most important word we got to know for this is variables. Variables are the things in an experiment that change. Some of those variables we can control, and some of them we can't. If we look here at the simple things we have in this experiment, what are some of the things we could change about it? Well, we could try changing the temperature of the water. We started our first demonstration with very hot water. But what if we used ice water? What if we used warm water? We could change the liquid that we use. What if instead of using water, we tried a different kind of liquid that we could find around the house? And of course, because we have piles of candy left over, we could try different kinds of candy. Maybe this demonstration works with other kinds of candy besides Skittles. Once we've decided what we want to change about our experiment, then it's time to actually perform it. While we perform the experiment, we are going to make a guess. We're going to start by making a guess. What's happening? What do we think is going to happen? If we use ice water, do we think it's going to change how fast the colors come out? Do we think it'll change the colors that come out? Maybe the whole plate will just explode. I don't know. We'll have to try it. When we change it, we want to guess or make a hypothesis what we think is going to happen. This is an easy and fun way to do true science at home. Once we've made those hypotheses, then it's time to actually perform the test. We're going to do the experiment. And maybe we want to set up more than one plate so that we can look at all of our different variables side by side. I'll show you some examples. Here we see the same demonstration, but with different temperatures of water. Now with different liquids. And finally, using different kinds of candy. And now, one of the most important parts. We have tested our hypotheses, we have tested our variables, and now we want to try to guess why did we get the results that we got. For instance, if we know that hot water has lots of energy, those molecules have lots of energy, and we know that cold water doesn't have quite as much energy, what does that tell us about how fast those molecules of color move towards the center of the plate. So we're going to make a guess, we're going to test it out, and then we're going to analyze our results. Uh, that was a lot of candy. I hope that you have learned a little bit about how we can use something as simple as Skittles and water around the house to do some real science and learn about the scientific method. This is Brainy Bill from BillLoudonScience.com. Thank you very much for joining me. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and all those other things. And 
We'll see you next time. Remember, do more science. Have more fun. Oh.